All right, here we go. We've got ourselves a new series coming at you. Spawning down in the bottom right for himself, because he is currently teamless. It is Gumiho in the red. And his opponent spawning up at the top left for Basilisk. Give it up for Serol in the blue. Serol, of course, playing fantastic. Gumiho playing highly chaotic. Very good StarCraft. I was just going to say, the chance of Gumiho going for a proxy 3 racks, or even proxy 2 racks, is quite high. And Serol, he precluded that. Going for the 17th drone, going for the 17th pool. He's going to be playing very safe. Very safe. And, yeah, that's... I like it. Gumiho skipping the scout for the moment. He did take a look. Just for a second, his camera flashed up to this location. If he doesn't check that in a little bit as, like, cycling through his camera hotkeys, I am going to make the boldest prediction that we're going to see a proxy fusion core there. That's what I... That's my extremely bold prediction. Right here. Or maybe... Uh, maybe here? Could be here. We'll see. We'll see. That is my extremely bold prediction. There's like the smallest chance we see it. But I'd feel so smart if it happened. Uh, Gumiho, by the way, doing the, the funny little wall. The funny little wall option here on this map. SCV does get pushed away. Gumiho doesn't get to know if there's a roach warren behind this. If this were dark, you would have to build a bunker here. Pretty much have to. Because dark goes for these five roach plays all the time. But it's not dark. It's Serral. Gumiho, I wouldn't hate it if he just plays, you know, a little bit greedy. Just plays a little bit risky. Uh, and it's Serral. Like, you know, like Serral doesn't often go for those types of plays. And that's part of why Dark is one of the most difficult players to go up against in StarCraft II's history. That doesn't mean he's necessarily the best, but it does mean he is one of the most difficult to prepare for. Serral looking around. Oh, SCV does get spotted going back home. I think Serral was maybe hoping to cut it back off. Uh, will be a 1-1-1 out of Gumiho. And it's going to be continuous marine production. He went for three marines before... Uh, three marines before reactor. So it's just now starting to produce its first two couple of units. Serral will see this. Sees five marines. And... Oh, he got in here. He did see the... No, that was the first gas. Okay, he saw the timer on the first gas. Uh, looks like my dreams of proxy fusion core are dead. Sag... Madge. Can't be Gladge. But this might turn into a two-base push. Babylon's not a bad map for two-base pushes. It's not an amazing map. Most of the maps in this map pool are... They're, uh, they're not the best for two-base pushes. But this is probably one of the better ones. Uh, siege tank positions are pretty good outside the bases. The thing is, Serral, he's already got good creep spread between his bases. He did take the line third, which means siege tank positions here are not going to be relevant. We might even see him take the line fourth if he does elect to go for that. Got a Roach Warren coming in behind us from Serral. He's been droning quite diligently, as we expect from Serral. And Queens... Oh, they're actually going to go hunting for this uh, Hellion a little bit. Look at a little bit of chip damage on that. Not bad. Ooh, Serral does see the... Okay, what did he see? What did he see? He saw the tech lab researching. He saw a barracks in production. Almost finished. He should be able to figure out that this is... Yeah, he should be able to figure out this is a, this is a two-base push. It's a little bit limited information, but it is Serral. It is Serral. We give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, checking to see, hey, are there a bunch of Hellions? Are there... Uh, is there a Widow Mine or something set up here? I do like that he split off a couple of units before he, he went too far. And he sees the Marine count. Good information. 
Serral is going to take a fourth base. The thing is, you can take a fourth base. Gumiho. Oh, nice. Hellion position. Scouts the fourth base. Scouts the fourth base timing. Knows exactly where it'll be. So now he knows this is where he wants to push. And that means that's also where he's going to want to clear creep. First two medevacs. Going to be pushing across the map. I do like the way that Gumiho has gone about this. Serral. Once again, great creep spread. He's going for Roach speed. He gets the... Oh, no, he does go double upgrades. I was like, he single upgrade seems very strange. Serral. Ooh, does he see the medevacs? No, they're going to be able to unload out of vision. And Gumiho, yeah, instantly forces a cancel. Scans. Oh, he doesn't get all the creep on the right side. That's actually kind of a big problem. And not kind of. That is a big problem. Because Gumiho needs to make use of, like, positions like this and positions like this. So the fact that the creep goes un, uh, uncleared is a problem. But the queen's getting off creep is even bigger of a problem. Serral going to lose three queens. Oh, man, that's actually such a big pick for Gumiho. And now he can keep fighting. He's going to find some more of these roaches. This is a really good set of trades from Gumiho. That was seven Marines and the Scouting Hellion. We're not going to count that. Seven Marines for six roaches, four queens. And part of the reason why that went the way that it did is that the Liberator in the main base got six drone kills. This was a phenomenal little segment here for Gumiho. And it, oh, the Liberator almost getting cut off, but not quite. I will say Serral is still in a totally playable position. Because, oh man, this is a lot of army though. Oh, good spot here from Serral with the Ling. Serral's setup is very good against two base plays, and especially with the creep being as far as it is. Ooh, now this will be, oh, nice cancel there from Serral on the uh, Ravager that was going to die. This will clear a lot of creep, but not enough. Well, enough is subjective. What is enough? Link counterattack on the third base. It's not even an orbital yet. It just landed. And Gumiho, hello? Oh, going back to work. Ends up losing one more SCV than he probably should have. A lot of lost mining time being forced from Serral for just a handful of Lings. That's a great little play. Creep spread is starting to get cleared, but it is not... The scans are not hitting everything. Ooh, Siege Tank going to get caught here. Great find from Serral. Gumiho. Oh, please lift that tank. Okay. I was going to say, if he doesn't lift that tank, that's... I, I, I don't want to say it, but you may as well almost throw in the towel against Serral if you're not lifting that tank up. Just because just Serral's just going to out uh, mechanics you at that point. Oh, Crossbiles did find the tank in the back. Marines fighting without plus one armor versus one one roaches. This is a pretty darn good fight for Serral. And this is not an all-in from Serral. He has already started the transition. Corosa Biles, ooh, barely getting dodged. I didn't even see where they got placed initially. Only two SCVs go down. Could have been a lot worse. And you know what? It looked like a bad fight from Gumiho, but the option was either fight there, and it was it was still actually not as bad of a fight as I thought it was going to be because he had those medevacs, because he had a decent concave. The other option was pull away from the third. So I actually do like that he, he chose to, to fight there, especially in, well, hindsight with how it went pretty decently. Serral, he's got creep outside of his opponent's third base. Gumiho finally going to nip that back. Uh, of course, behind this, Serral is getting into Bane Speed, plus two Carapace, plus one Melee, and a Hive. Ooh, Gumiho going to get found in the middle of the map. He's added on very early Marauders into this composition. A couple of drones going down on the bottom side. Liberator will finally get cleared up, though. Serral spots the drop, the unload on the top side. Uh, despite the fact that there's six medevacs, they are kind of... Well, they're pretty low on energy. Big stim from Gumiho. He's going to try and pick the fight, but serral has got enough. And we'll drive him back. Gumiho is maybe a small misjudgment on that fight. Serral, he has been so much more comfortable playing Roach Styles into this Roach Ravager Ling Bane Ultra Viper. Which is, of course, a mouthful. And it is a lot for the Terran to try and digest. Ooh, nice scan in the middle of the map. Finds some creep. Finds a queen. Good job from Gumiho. Serral. He picks off a couple of units. That is a big army in the middle, though. Grosser Biles. Oh, Gumiho barely avoided him. Did connect on a couple of tanks, but it could have been a lot worse. 
Only one on each tank. Serral does have a lot of Ravager Ling Bane, but I don't know. This is not the fight. Gumiho is sieged. Ends up being pretty expensive for Serral. I think all the Banes went down. We got 16... Wait, 16 more. Where are they? They must have just popped out. They're coming in from the bottom side. Tank fire target them. No, Blinding Cloud is going to come on in. That will be good on the frontline tank. Good hot pickup from Gumiho. Serral, does he have enough to keep driving this back? Ah, uh, it is really close right now. That rushed engagement from Serral, really giving Gumi Hope some opportunities. It is a, a very cost-efficient set of trades from Gumi. Queen will get picked off, kind of wandering through the middle. This is a very dedicated attack from Gumi Hope. Serral does have an upgrade lead. Blinding Clouds, grabbing one tank, second one in the back, is going to be able to get some good shots off. Third tank being picked up and saved. Gumiho's done a pretty good job of avoiding corrosive vials, but the upgrade, the upgrade disadvantage has been a problem. 1-1-2 one, one, versus 1-1 one, one might not seem that bad, but plus two carapace on every unit for Serral is quite nice. Now, Gumiho is going to take the upgrade lead in a moment with his 2-2, two, two, but there's still Vipers on the field. They have recharged their energy. Big sucks. They're back up to quadruple abduct or double blinding cloud. Whichever Serral chooses. We do see Vikings added on here. Gumio has recognized he's probably not going to win the game with this. Still pumping out a ton of bio, but fourth command center, three more barracks. Powering hard. Oh, Blinding Cloud. Oh, Vipe Bearer. One of them does go down. Big mistake from Serral. Didn't expect the army to be there, I think. Got him distracted by Gumiho. Uh, Parasitic Bomb was pretty decent. Got a meta back. Damaged up a few more. I mean, even though the Vipers went down... This is still looking dangerous here for Gumiho. Serral does have a lot of Lings, Roaches, Ravagers, and Banes. Now, attacking into these barracks is not ideal. Ooh, Rosa Biles to connect on a couple of units. Could have been so much worse. Gumiho just got out of there. Uh, Double Viper being rebuilt from Serral. He does still have good creep spread on the outsides of the map, but in this middle location where Gumiho has been driving so aggressively. It's, it's been tough to deal with. Nice little Marauder drop on the bottom side. Actually going to find... Oh, uh, I would have much preferred to see him get that last tumor, but it's... Okay. Huh. That actually... I, I get he wanted to get economic damage done, but... Yeah, I don't know. I really wish he would have sniped that fourth tumor. It would have just... Oh. Banelings just crashed into some rocks. A little bit of an oopsie. But it wasn't many. It was just a couple. Plus two melee, plus three carapace. Getting close to completing here for Serral. He's going to go in on top of this base. This is a very well set up Gumiho. He's about to have the planetary fortress. Banelings trying to crash on in. Siege tanks on the high ground are going to be quite good. There's the planetary coming online. SCV pull is uh, pretty good. Gross Vials on the top side will make this less bad for Serral, but this is so expensive. Gumiho will hold. Meanwhile, though, on the other side, ooh, a couple of SCVs. Actually, no, not even the SCVs. It's just the barracks. Oh, I would have loved to have seen him stick around and try and kill off those barracks. Meanwhile, attack on the top side, just kind of turning around and going back home. Serral has been up in supply and had the tempo advantage for most of this. Well, maybe not the tempo advantage. He's been up in supply for a lot of this game. But Roaches, well, actually, there's barely any Roaches left. So now it is a true supply lead. Yeah, 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 definitely. Gumiho, no transition into Ghosts. He's not thinking about Ghosts. He's only on 53 SCVs. He can't afford it at this point anyways. That is a flimsy medevac with another four Marauder drop. Gumiho, ooh, Vikings coming in on the back line, or at least trying to. Ling's getting it on top of the army. Parasitic Bomb on the medevacs. Oh, boost coming in from Gumiho, but he doesn't actually spread. There's the spread now, but it is very late. And a lot of damage on those medevacs. One of them, even two of them falling. And I think Serral's got him. Yeah, he does. Gumiho getting split apart by Serral, and Serral will take game number one. It's a messy game. It goes in the favor of the Finnish Phenom. He goes up one to zero. All right, here we go. Spawning down in the bottom left. It is Gumiho in the red. And his opponent.
Spawning up at the top right for Basilisk, it is Serral. In the blue. And we're going to be seeing a two Rax Reaper play from the Gumi God. Nice. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Serral, wow. Ha. <laughs> he is once again going to go full first, I think. And against Gumiho, honestly, I, I thought this early SCV was going to be for a proxy Rax. I was like, it feels a little late. But Gumiho does love his proxy three Rax. It's really, really common. Uh, but it's going to be the two Rax Reaper. Serral. Honestly, pool first without speed against the proxy two Rax Reaper, or not proxy two Rax Reaper, against two Rax Reaper is not great. Gumiho, let's see if he has CV scouts. I don't think he will. I don't think you need to with this setup. Uh, but in terms of build orders, how these two match up, yeah, I really don't like the pool first. With that, uh, if it's gas pool, I like it a lot more. Okay, he's only going to put two drones on gas. That means his link speed is not going to be the fastest. Serral, look at this. He's looking everywhere for the proxy racks. And I mean, it makes sense. It's Gumiho. How funny would it have been if Gumiho had like done all of his homework and just the barracks were like right here? Funny like, oof. Uh, Serral? Where are the links? Okay, they're gonna sneak around. It is the two racks into three into CC, so it is not gonna be some three racks reaper. Gumiho, oh, trying to get in on top of this drone. Good dodge on the grenade by Serral, recognizing which uh, unit was being attacked. Serral, I was gonna say he needs to finish up link speed as quick as possible. It does resaturate this gas, and there we go. Gumiho, starting up the add-ons right away. Ooh, good job. Oh, Gumiho. Oh, Gumiho got a drone. Very nice. Serral does check in, sees the add-ons are completed quite quickly, and that should let you know that this is probably a fast follow-up of aggression. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. Gumiho. Almost losing that Reaper. Obviously, he was focused on the other side. Uh, interesting that he kept the third Reaper at home. Serral with a creep tumor placement that is very conservative, which is to say good and safe against this uh, a potential Reaper dive. Now, the one nice thing is that the Reapers, the third Reaper being kept at home really takes the punch out of this three racks play. Gumiho behind this is going to be a factory. Not going to be the four racks, just going to be the three racks. We'll see if Serral wrecked Oh, well. He doesn't need to recognize yeah, it. He scouted it. Under attack. So this is not going to be like the... What's the, uh, the the Reaper Hellion? The four Hellions into Liberator. This is going to be a two-base follow-through again from Gumio. And this is another good two-base push map. You know, Siege Tanks here. Siege Tanks here. Siege Tanks here. Siege Tanks here. It can be strong. It's very viable. But... Will Serral let that happen? That is... That is a good question. And for me, the answer is... Uh, I don't know. Creep spread already starting to advance quite nicely. I think Serral's going to recognize the high chance of this being a two-base follow-through. We'll see what his tech is. He's only just now started uh, mining gas in earnest once again, and it's going to be a quick baneling nest. So he is, well, cognizant of the potential of a, a push coming through. Creep spread, obviously, once you get it down around these rocks, it's a really, really big thing. And speaking of these rocks, just going to say, Serral will really want to clear those out as soon as possible. Because if they're up, when a two-base push comes through, speaking of which, Gumiho, yeah, needs that tech lab. Wasn't right on time with it. Could have been a tiny bit faster. Might not seem like a big deal, but these timings need to be as crisp and as clean as possible. 
especially against a player like Serral, who's going to be so good with the defense. By the way, Serral sees exactly where the armory is and exactly where it is going. And he sees that the medevacs will not be here yet. He might even see you when they cross over. Serral building some banelings. His baneling speed is going to be quite late. And this rock, these rocks are still on a lot of HP. And in a weird way, Gumiho kind of wants to defend these rocks. Better be good. Plus one weapons, combat shield about to complete. Gumiho. Going to be able to find this Overlord. Nice grenade, but Serral mostly dodging. Ooh, Queens are going to get transfused up. Good job. This is a lot of firepower in this army. Queens starting to fall. Huge target fire on the Banelings. Very nice from Gumiho. And just like that, he gains himself a lot of momentum. Queens are still alive. Oh, one medevac going to get targeted down. Baneling, last one, does get targeted, but the medevacs go down. The entire fight took place on creep. And that is why, even though it looked super good for Gumiho, Serral still did enough there. The transfuses were very on point. The target fire on the Banes was magnificent. But he didn't clear any creep. He didn't clear any creep. Baneling speed is now on the way. There's a fourth hatch done for Serral. And Serral didn't crumble. That looked so deadly. But he stopped droning at pretty much the perfect timing. Yeah, like I said, the queens were good. He did... How many queens did he lose? He still lost three queens. Fair number of banelings. That was still cost efficient for Gumiho. But remember that this is a two-base push. He needs it to be cost efficient. Serral. Oh, he doesn't want those banelings getting clicked. Gumiho looking for it, though. Siege tank on the high ground. Serral. Oh, wow. Nine kills on that tank already. Oh, nice creep spread. Continue to move forward on the right side. But of course, now this left side is the point of contention. Serral looking for an interception, maybe, on these units. Moving across the map. Oh, that is a very sad Marine. Serral getting really close to Baneling speed. Will come back home with the units. Good job from Gumiho to kind of carry the reinforcements through. Oh, this hatchery getting very low on HP. Serral. Oh, wow. Gumiho going deep with the units, but he will be able to pick up the siege tank fire. Is Man, those were some long-range tanks. Siege tanks. Seems like Serral really wants to wait for plus one carapace, but at the very least... Ooh. This is actually quite scary. Serral's just going to give up the base. Okay, Gumiho. Oh, did try and find something with a Liberator on the other side. I don't think he got any drones, though. Serral is keeping tabs on the third base timing. And he sees it now. I, I actually really like that Serral gave up the base there. I think that's a very mature decision. Especially because he's, he's got this base on the right side. He does need to take a good fight pretty soon. He's not on the highest drone count. Gumiho is forcing that. Burrow on the way for Serral. The other thing is, Serral's actually on the path to having better upgrades. For now, it's even, and Gumiho will have a small upgrade timing lead with 1-1 one, one versus 0-1. But when I say small, I mean, like, really small. It's going to be difficult to take advantage of that, uh, especially since he's not really out on the map yet. Gumiho kind of hiding on the top left. That is 24 Marines, 2 tanks, and 4 medevacs. That is a lot of his army. Meanwhile, Liberator trying to sneak in on the right side. Won't be able to get too much done. The creep on this right side, the fact that it was never cleared out by Gumiho, even though Serral was like kind of slow spreading it, focusing on the main attack, uh, is a bit of a problem. Ling's getting it on the army in the back. The siege tanks will be left to their own devices. Gumiho, oh, he, he tried to retarget fire the tanks like four times. Yeah, it seems like they derped out a little bit. Good cleanup from Serral, but that was still expensive. Still a lot of Marines here. Serral. Ooh, can he fight this? I don't know, but it's... Uh, nope. Well, no. No, he was not able to. Ooh, that was really expensive for Serral. Meanwhile, middle of the map. Actually, Gumiho's now up in supply significantly. Obviously, Banelings are a great equalizer, and there's not a lot of tanks here. Ooh, Burrowed Banes. Psych. Meanwhile, Ling Bane running into the army. Good pickup from Gumiho. Gumiho really turning on the jets here. 2-2 is much faster for Serral, but this tank positioning, Gumiho has been playing this so methodically and so well. Serral has been playing it quite well as in addition, but oh, Liberator for the defense is not going to be enough. However, these Marines might be. 
Serral did manage to sneak up to a hive. He's got a Dream of Glands on the way. Lings and Banes moving forward. Gumiho not paying attention. Serral getting some massive Baneling detonations. Baiting his opponent's attention away with the Ling counterattack, which wins through anyways. Kills 15 SCVs. Serral keeps his perfect map record alive. And just like that, it all falls apart for Gumiho. Serral now up 28 workers. Army supplies are even. He's got the upgrade advantage for the, uh, the next little bit. Gumiho. Oh, it was looking so good for him. But Serral strikes back in a huge way. Liberator on top of the tanks is really nice here. But Blinding Cloud. Oh, he's actually going to go for Abducts. I don't hate that either. The Queens, they're just going to shell down the tanks. It's going to take them a while. But they'll do it. Two of the three tanks going down. Target fire on the fuller medevac. Serral will be able to deal with this army more than well enough. And there's the abduct on the tank as it's trying to unsiege and reposition. There's a lot of Marines here and a lot of Marines on the reinforcement, but it's not going to be enough. Serral will take the game in the series. A brilliant comeback from Serral. Don't even call it a comeback. And he completes the 2-0. If you enjoyed that series, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We'll catch you on the flip side.